The winner is Jennifer Flay. The Right Honourable Mr. Winston Peters, our Acting Prime Minister, Mr. Sir Stephen Tyrrell, founder of KIA, Monsieur Stéphane Ray, Head of Scientific and Cultural Office of the French Embassy in New Zealand, my sponsors, Barfoot and Thompson, and indeed all the sponsors of KIA Awards, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is of special significance for me to receive this Kia World Class New Zealand Award as a recognition from my homeland for my work in the visual arts in France and on the world stage. I am honoured to receive this award in the exceptional company of my fellow recipients whose individual achievements in such a wide range of different fields is truly staggering. I am moved to receive this award in the presence of my wonderful whānau, my, my sister, Dr. Briar Peat, my brother-in-law, Dr. Bruce Peat, and their children, Martin, Andrew, and Nicola, my cousin, Kay Harrison, her husband, Patrick, and their children, Gria and Carter, my cousin, Tom O'Neill, representing his family, traveling the board, Jane, Emma, and Amy O'Neill, my cousins Chris and Sumie O'Neill and their sons Shimon and Ben. And Dr. Derek Bell, a very dear friend of mine from my university uh, days at Auckland University. As you can well imagine, having lived in France, my other home, uh, since 1980, it's not an everyday occurrence for me to be surrounded by friends and family. So this award brings with it something very special and very, very precious. Naturally, at this time, my thoughts turn to those who cannot be here, but who are with us in spirit. My sister, Sarah Flay, her children, Mackenzie and Caleb, in Seattle. My niece, Frances Peet, who is completing her doctorate at Colorado State University. Chris and Sumier's extremely talented daughter, Hannah O'Neill, premier danseuse, prima ballerina at the Paris Opera Ballet, who has brightened my days and sweetened my life since her arrival in Paris in 2011 to pursue her art, and my mother and father, who unfortunately are no longer with us. On a day like today, I feel their loss even more acutely. I know how immensely proud they would have been. I'd like to say a special word at this time for my dear uncle, Eric, Dr. Eric Stevens, who passed away only last week. My cousin Jennifer, his daughter, is with us tonight. Uncle Eric was a wonderful man, a true role model for me, and he played a very important part in my life following the untimely death of our mother in 1974. I'd like to pay tribute to other, two other outstanding New Zealanders who are incredibly influential in the path that my life has taken. Uh, Trixie Illingworth, who was the art teacher at Auckland Girls Grammar School when I was at school there in the 1970s, Miss Illingworth had the insight to introduce me to the study of art history when I was only 14 years old. Recognizing my passion, she was a constant source of encouragement, coaching me, mentoring me, right through to scholarship. She was what is called today a game changer. Professor Tony Green, from the head of the Department of Art History at Auckland University uh, when I studied there, Beyond the stylistic, historic, and critical analysis which underlie the discipline, Tony also encouraged the personal and subjective experience of an artwork, the visual and sensual appreciation. Through his teaching, I not only acquired essential knowledge and the keys to decipher centuries of art production in the Western world, but perhaps more importantly, I felt enfranchised to look at art, to contemplate, to consider, and to formulate my impressions. Eventually, this led me to my work with contemporary artists of my generation and those younger, to uncharted territory where no pre-existing literature or critical discourse could prompt understanding 
or legitimise the choices made. Throughout my life overseas, New Zealand has, both, has been both my secret weapon and my secret garden. I have constantly derived a particular strength from this land and from, a, from my roots in this country. Perhaps this may have something to do with the New Zealand spirit. The inspirational example of the Maori people was an important influence on me growing up. Their noble spirit, their deep and almost mystic relationship with their land, and their extremely sophisticated, multifaceted artistic expression. Resilience, courage, determination, the will to go that extra yard to push the boundaries exemplify for me the New Zealand spirit, but also the genuine kindness and gentle nature temperament of our people, which strikes visitors from all around the world, the strong moral fiber and high ideals. I have sought and found refuge in these values as many times as I have sung Hoi Kari Kariana to myself under my breath over the years for a quick fix of courage or to heal a wound. Yes, New Zealand is my secret weapon, but also my secret garden, a country in which I have sensed very, very early on and intuitively the notion of the sublime through the breathtaking grandeur of our fjords, the fragile magnificence of our glaciers, our endless beaches, the unpredictable and indomitable force of our geysers, the sheer might of our mountains and volcanoes, and the fascinating other world of our deep forests. In the exacting world of the visual arts, I've always felt extremely privileged to be a New Zealander to have been inspired and elevated by the strength and beauty of our South Pacific island nation, a faraway place which has never failed to give me strength. New Zealand is unique. The kia, the world's only alpine parrot, is also unique in its kind, like so much of what surrounds us in this beautiful land I call home. I am proud to be a recipient of an award that bears his name. Thank you, Madame et Monsieur, je vous remercie. Bonsoir. <laughs>